Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting equation with complex numbers. I guess you could call this a homemade problem because I don't think anyone else has thought about this problem. If you do see a video please let us know in the comment section down below. So anyways we're going to be solving for this equation z equals e to the power iz. So let's talk a little bit about what e to the power iz means because that's a complex exponential and z is complex. Hopefully you do know Euler's formula or the polar form of a complex number that's written as e to the power i theta where theta is an angle, you know, just a real number. Now if you expand it, you're going to get cosine theta plus i sine theta. So it's kind of like a more compact way of writing a complex number in standard form. Of course, if its modulus is 1 in this case, but if you have an r that's different from 1, you can definitely multiply both sides by r and the equation will still work. Make sense? But we're going to focus on here because in this case we have something like an e to the iz. So what does that mean? By this formula, can I write e to the iz as cosine of z plus i sine of z? Well, it looks like this formula is going to work, but what is cosine of a complex number, right? That brings other complexities into the equation. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what this means, and then we'll proceed with the solution. So suppose z is something like a plus bi. By the way, our equation this dictates that this is the same thing as z. So how is that possible? You have cosine z plus i sine z, but it has to be z at the same time. Okay, we're going to be looking at some results from Wolfram Alpha at the end as well. So if z is equal to a plus bi, then e to the iz can be written as e to the power i times a plus bi. And if you go ahead and distribute the i, you're going to get e to the ai plus bi squared, i squared is negative 1, so we can write this as negative b plus ai. So negative b plus ai is just a plus bi rotated pi over 2 degrees, right? In which direction? Okay, that's for you to find out. But it's basically a 90 degree turn. And you can plot it and see that for yourself. Now, this is not going to make much sense unless we separate the real and imaginary parts. Of course, I mean using the properties of exponents. This can be written as e to the power negative b times e to the power ai. Remember, a is a real number and b is a real number. So e to the power negative b is actually real. Awesome. And of course, e to the ai is complex, right? So how do we work this out? Again, by using Euler's formula, this can be written as cosine of a plus i sine of a. So this becomes e to the iz becomes e to the power negative b multiplied by cosine of a plus i times sine of a. Great. So after distributing, we're going to be able to get our number in standard form e to the power negative b cosine a plus i times e to the power negative b times sine of a. Great. So this is e to the iz. But wait a minute, isn't that supposed to equal z? Yes, but what is z? It is a plus bi. Hmm. Interesting equation, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. How do you solve something like this? If two complex numbers are equal, of course, I'm not... Um, anyways, let's talk about it later. In this case, we have the real parts equal to real parts and complex, I mean, imaginary parts equal imaginary parts. So this is going to equal a and this is going to equal b. So let's go ahead and write that as a system of equations, right? e to the power negative b cosine of a equals a, e to the power negative b sine of a equals b. That looks like an interesting equation, right? There is some sort of symmetry maybe a little bit, but how do you solve something like this? Well, you can maybe eliminate some of the factors, like divide these equations side by side, and the e to the power negative b is going to cancel out. Obviously, that's non-zero. And you're going to get cosine over sine, which is cotangent. But let's flip both sides. We get tangent of a equals b over a. Does it not look familiar to you? Like when you had something like a plus bi, so let's say this is z, and the argument of z is theta, and you would probably say something like tangent theta is equal to b over a. That's what the formula is, right? So it's kind of very similar to it, because in this case, the theta seems to be a right? 
So this makes sense. But what makes more sense is we can isolate B and write it in terms of A. So B equals A times tangent of A. Let's see if we can use this information and plug it into our equation and solve it. So I can pick one of these equations, doesn't matter which one. Let's go ahead and use the top one. Replace B with A tangent A. Then we're going to get E to the power negative A tan A times cosine of A equals A. You like that equation? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Well, this equation, and guess what? At this point, I'm stuck. Is there not a way to do it? Yes, there is. And that is called the second method. Okay? If you know of a way to solve this equation, obviously numerically you can solve it. There's numerical methods, but I don't like numerical methods. I like algebraic methods, including Wolfram Alpha. I mean, not Wolfram Alpha. What is that W thing called? Lambert's W function. Yes, I always confuse them. Anyways, so let's talk about second method. I guess we should go back in time and call this first method, which was kind of inconclusive, right? But at least we came up with some equation. Okay, cool. Now, the second equation is going to look at it very differently, right? Z equals E to the IZ. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put these things on the same side, but I want to keep the Z. I, I don't care about the exponential because exponential is very easy to manipulate. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by E to the power negative IZ. So it's going to look like this. Z multiplied by E to the negative IZ. And then we're going to get equals e to the iz times e to the power negative iz. Make sense? Now this is going to be e to the power 0, which is 1. Awesome. So we get z e to the negative iz equals 1. What is so good about this? Well, we got to remember Lambert's w function again, right? That's an awesome function, isn't it? Kind of product log, in other words. So the Lambert's w function is basically something that acts on t e to the t and gives us t as the output. So it's kind of like the inverse function for t e to the t. You can think of it that way. It has some very nice properties and I've done quite a few problems on that. And maybe I'll, I should make a playlist on Lambert's W function, right? Don't you think? Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and manipulate this a little bit, right? That's an expression. We can manipulate it uh, until we get something like this. t e to the t is our key to the solution. So we have a z, but we have a negative iz. So this is the t we're going to use. So I kind of need to turn this into t, which means I need to multiply both sides by negative i, right? Multiply by negative i. You're going to get negative i z times e to the power negative i z equals negative i. Wow, that was easy, right? That was i z or easy. Now, we can go ahead and apply Lambert's w function, but let's go ahead and... Oh, that's not good. Maybe let's go ahead and move this somewhere else so we can kind of work with it. Oops, the E came as well. Doesn't matter. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to separate this a little bit too. So let's go ahead and move this guy over here. Yay. Now, we can go ahead and W both sides. If you apply Lambert's W on the left-hand side, you're basically going to get T, which is this, right? And that's also T, of course. So it's going to give us negative iz equals w of negative i, whatever that is, right? I and mean, obviously, if we're going to use Wolfram Alpha for that one. But let's go ahead and isolate z. How do you isolate z from here? Multiply by i, because guess what? i times negative i is negative i squared, which is equal to positive 1. So multiply by i here too, you're going to get z. z is going to be i times w of negative i. And that should be the solution. But let's go ahead and take a look at what it is. And then we're going to verify it. All right. Ready? Cool. Now, we got Lambert W function of negative i times i. And that's what it is. Approximately 0 0.57641 plus 0 0.374708i. And what happens if you plug it into e to the i z? Guess what? You're going to get z back. So it's that very special complex number that gives us this relationship. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.